Hey guys, Sokka here and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video and would you look at this thing. Still going, still going, there's the bottom. This is the Saturn V mock-up from the tutorial uh, section of the Kerbal Wiki. On board we have Billy, Bobton, Sybil, and Tomsey. And these guys are going to replicate the Apollo 8 mission. So here we are on the launch pad. They will establish a, a free return trajectory around the moon and then uh, stable or circularize the orbit around the moon, then return home without actually landing. Now, this, uh, this rocket is huge, and is, you could probably tell it's a beast to try to control. Uh, it's very top heavy, and it doesn't really want to turn. And those uh, five mainsail engines down there at the bottom firing full power. Luckily, they're not overheating too bad. I think they fixed the overheating in this uh, recent update because when I used this rocket at uh, 0.18 and 0.19, I could only run it at three quarters throttle because all the engines would overheat almost instantly. But here we go. The Kerbals have replicated their Saturn V which the real Saturn V, according to Wikipedia, weighed 6,200,000 pounds, or 2,800,000 kilograms. So it's quite a beast, and if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, still the uh, most powerful man-made vehicle ever in history. And it's uh, also the, t yeah, the tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever brought to operational status and holds the record for heaviest payload launch and heaviest payload capacity to low Earth orbit. So we're hoping these Kerbals have the same luck. There is the bottom stage burning off now. We make our gravity turn, detach, and fire our second stage. Now just as all the previous launch profiles before, the first stage is solely to get us to our gravity turn, then the second stage will do all the heavy lifting and to get us uh, to our apoaps of about 120,000 is what I'm shooting for here. So we'll bring up the nav ball, make sure I'm not spinning out of control. And as you can see, we're almost halfway through the fuel on the second stage. Uh, this thing is a beast when you turn off the engines, which uh, you have to turn off the engines, otherwise, you'll just keep on you know climbing and you won't have a circular orbit at all so once I reach my uh, Apple apps here it's uh, going to be a handful to try to get down to uh, to our maneuver node 90,000 there's a hundred thousand meters and there we go stopping at 118 to start to put in a maneuver node and we shall circularize our orbit as best we can. We don't need to be too precise, we just need to make sure we won't fall in the atmosphere whenever we burn towards the moon. Which is always exciting going to the moon the first time. Also a lesson there, um, I went to a uh, quick transition to my burn. I went to physical time acceleration thinking it would calm my rocket down, but I was still in the atmosphere, so the rocket was still turning, so I had to get above 70,000 meters. There goes that second stage and firing the last bit. I had to get above 70,000 meters to engage um, the physical, or yeah, the physics time acceleration and calm my rocket down. As standard practice, deleting the maneuver node now that we're firing prograde and our Apple apps is climbing, which I factored into by cutting my engines a little short. And there we go, 111 by 136. Now, it's not perfectly circular, but it's good enough to aim for the moon, which there she is. It's too late to fire now, so we shall set our maneuver node to about this point in the orbit, set the target, and 1.4 degrees off, so our maneuver node will see it when we uh, apply sufficient delta V to our maneuver. So basically figure out the 90 degree mark, keep the moon 90 degrees to your right, and then burn straight ahead, and sure enough we get some encounter, little fidgeting, and there, there is an actual sphere of influence encounter. So for this free return trajectory, we don't want to burn 
to the right of the moon. We actually want to adjust our burn to where we come to the left of the moon so it begins to pull us back to the right and we establish a figure eight. So there we go, we have a maneuver set up to where our encounter there is to the left side of the moon and we will do a mid-course correction to get our actual free return trajectory set. But this will get us close enough to where we can uh, can work with. I bring our node down a bit to account for the 1.4 degrees we're off. And here we go, sunrise above Kerbin, we're ready to start our burn, spinning around to the planet. Um, in the days before maneuver nodes, everyone said, when you see the moon fire and you'll get there. But we are going to fire a little bit before we see the moon, but not much. That gives me a good feeling as if the moon was already visible and sliding to the right on the celestial plane there we would have fired too late but sure enough after a few moments of burning here the moon will start to rise over the horizon and there's our destination we will see the craters and pits of the moon for the first time through Kerbal eyes and slowing down bringing the throttle down getting it as exact as possible Let's see how that does. Delete the maneuver node, and we have our encounter, but the gravity of the moon is gonna pull us directly into the surface, which we don't want. So we'll set up our mid-course correction. And at first, I pull to the left and go retrograde to kind of kill our orbit, but that's a lot of delta V that I don't wanna use. So I delete that set up a new maneuver node, and I'm like, you know what, let's just, maybe we went too fast, and sure enough, just a touch of retrograde, 2.3 meters a second, is all we need to kill. So I'll see you at the next maneuver node. Hey guys, welcome back. So we will establish our free return trajectory now with our maneuver node, and in order to establish a good free return trajectory, we want to add just a touch more delta V. And then you can see by the moon that figure eight start to form. So the, uh, the moon itself is actually bigger than the purple dot. So it may look like the orbit is going uh, too far outside the purple dot, or it looks like it's just going to go around. But that's not factoring in the actual size of the moon. So you have to trust that periaps number. So you don't say, well, it looks good on the orbit map, and then you end up crashing into it. So zooming in here, you can see that figure eight forming around the moon, and we will adjust our inclination to get it a perfect on-plane figure eight. So a little finagling here. Right now we are, darn it. Right now with that uh, free return trajectory set up, it's not a, like a true free return trajectory because it brings us back to Kerbin but at 300,000 meters um, above the surface which will not slow us down we would be stuck in that orbit forever so it's not a free return trajectory it's like a free flyby trajectory so with a little finagling I adjust my inclination adjust more delta V and nothing seems to be bringing down that periaps to the planet Kerbin, that's the uh, purple indicator. On the, uh, on the maneuver node, when you see purple, that means that's your orbit after you leave the sphere of influence from the moon. So as it goes around, it goes from blue to purple, or to orange to purple. But we're ready to execute that maneuver now. So we fire our engines, only need to add 35 or so meters a second delta V not a big burn at all and I'm very I'm running on very low throttle as you can see here so I don't shoot it uh, you don't want to miss your maneuver nodes bad on a free return trajectory half meter a second difference we can work with that kill our maneuver node and there's our periaps one million and then I just burn a little bit and see that periaps shrinking. So I keep burning, keep burning, keep burning. There we go. 30,000 meters. 
and I still don't hit the moon. So right there is a free return trajectory. If I didn't touch this rocket again, we would come down safely in the Kerbin atmosphere. But now it's time to separate our main engine engage RCS thrusters and float away, and now it's time to dock the command module to the lunar module. We'll be doing this for real on the Apollo 11 mission when we finally come down to the moon, so we gotta make sure our Kerbals are capable. So I just decouple the node, engage RCS, just a slight touch of forward thrust, set the port as our target, and then once we're a little bit far, far away, I just pitch up. The capsule rotates around while the lunar module stands still. And it's very important not to do this maneuver too quickly because your nose can actually clip that lunar module and start sending it into a spin. And then you have to catch up to it while it's spinning out of control and there's no one flying it. But once my nose is clear, I just pick up and I don't even have to thrust. The lunar module is magnetized and after a little bit of wiggling and a bit of finagling there we go our lunar module is now connected to our command module and we make sure to activate the command module engine I didn't have my staging set up down there correctly as you can see as if I hit space bar the lunar module engine would fire and not the command module so manually selecting I put on the command module engine and now we're on our way to the moon.